Hello and welcome to Pecantation Points video snark. I'm making my way through Fallen by Lauren Kate. If you haven't seen the other videos, you might want to do that before jumping into this one or else you might be confused. Links will be posted below. Chapter 16 The next day, Luce stands in the cemetery holding two letters. The first, an apology from Cam and a plea for her to come talk to him later. The second from Daniel saying that he wanted to meet her by the lake. Luce can't stop thinking about the kiss she shared with Daniel and obviously wants to go straight to Daniel. And then we flash back to the night before. Daniel had kept touching her, saying over and over that something must have changed, but at the same time, he also seems afraid. They went back to the school, but Luce figures that she must have fallen asleep, because the next thing she remembers is Daniel carrying her to her room. It was dark, and Daniel was glowing again and casting an odd light over everything. Daniel tells her not to worry about the reds. He puts her into bed and tells her not to disappear. She promises that she won't. He tells her to come find her before classes the next morning. He kisses her one last time before he leaves. Except that Luce ended up sleeping through her morning classes. She eventually decides that she should get up and finds the aforementioned letters under her door. Luce knows that she has to go talk to Cam first because if she goes to see Daniel, he, she won't want to leave. She finds Cam in the cemetery where the chapter started on. And for the record, I hate this annoying back and forth narrative. Just tell us what happened the night before and then make your way to where we are now. Why would you write like this? It's annoying to read. Cam looks like he's in a bad way. And I also remember how he stated that he'd been at the bar all day in the previous chapter. Who springs up the couple who tried to sneak out, but Cam only scoffs and says that they both had tracking bracelets and of course they got caught. He continues on and says that he hated how that guy had his hands all over Luce, but Luce cuts him off and starts trying to break up with him. Although I feel like break up isn't the right phrase to use since she and Cam were never really anything, honestly. Cam knows where Luce is headed and asks if it's Daniel. Cam then gets angry and says a lot of stuff about how Luce doesn't know either of them and that she's jumping into a decision. Luce feels like she needs to defend her decision. Cam argues that Daniel won't even touch her, but Luce says that he does and that she doesn't have to explain herself to him. But when Cam scoffs over the idea that Daniel would actually kiss her in a romantic way, Luce says it is true and that it was the best kiss that she's ever had. Granted, it was her first kiss, but she still feels like she'd be defending Daniel's kiss when she's 60. Luce goes on and says that the only reason why she came to meet Cam was to tell him to stop bothering her and that she's picked Daniel. Again, Cam keeps saying about how she's making a mistake, blah blah blah. It just pisses Luce off the more he continues to talk. Luce tries to go, but Cam grabs her. He says to give him one more chance. Luce says no. Cam then grabs Luce so that she literally cannot break free of him and insists that he should get to kiss her too. Luce continues to say no. And before I go on, <sighs> Just what this story needed, a sexual assault. Even if Cam doesn't do anything, this behavior is not okay. Oh my, how charming, a guy who forced himself on me, said no woman ever. She felt safe in his strong, capable hands, and she needed to feel safe. It was such a change from, well, every moment when she wasn't kissing Cam, she knew that she was forgetting something, someone, who? She couldn't remember. There was only the kiss, his lips, and... Hey, so do you remember that fairy boy in Born at Midnight who had the power to manipulate emotions? And I talked for a while about how creepy it was because how do you know that you even really like him at all? Yeah, that. So Cam is about to kiss Luce, and she has this sudden overwhelming urge that this is exactly where she wants and needs to be. And then Luce is on the ground with Daniel and Gab standing over her and Cam. Gabby helps Luce to her feet, and, but Daniel can't even look at her. Cam sends up spitting man. He asks who pushed him, but Gabby is the one who steps forward. She then starts to beat the snot out of Cam. Luce mainly just stands by and watches with horror. Daniel finally comes and puts his arm around Luce. She says that she wanted to end things between her and Cam for good this time. Daniel just seems disappointed with her, but expresses that he's glad that he and Gabby got to Luce in time. Luce asks how it is that Gabby is able to beat Cam, but Daniel says that it's just what girls can do. Yay, girl power? He says that he wants to walk and talk with her and to explain some things. A clear flat space where two peach trees had grown together, their trunks bowed towards each other, forming the outline of a heart in the air below them. Symbolism 
Daniel says that he doesn't know where to begin and then agrees to do a good news, bad news situation with Luce, but also makes her promise not to run off before she hears the good news first, which she does. He starts off by talking about how God commanded everybody to love him unconditionally, which is why he cursed the snake to forever be a snake. The talk of snakes reminds Luce of the creepy necklace Cam had given her. Daniel goes on and says he feels cursed. And then he keeps trying to explain to Luz, but keeps being unable to get it right. He says that he keeps falling in love over and over, but only with Luz, and that he gets to live forever, and, as in he's immortal. And he says that he keeps finding Luz, and then she dies when he, she's around 17. And see, what did I tell you? This is literally the baseline plot to the immortals. He goes on to say that there have been past lives of hers where he could kiss her and she didn't immediately die. So his initial reaction to her not dying following their kiss is a little premature because he literally says that she always dies, eventually. He says that he used to seek her out, but then he tried to hide from her, but then she would come find him instead. They continue to talk for a while and Daniel keeps going on about his immortality and how much he loves her and then Luz finally gets it why it is that he looks for so familiar which yeah welcome to something i figured out a long time ago honey daniel then regurgitates all of this info about their past lives together and yeah this isn't even pretending not to be ripped off from them immortals anymore wait what are the publishing timelines for those books the first the immortals book evermore came out february 2009 fallen came out december 2009 that's cutting it a bit close, but it is possibly copied. Luce eventually decides that she's heard enough and starts to walk away, but then she stops because she had promised to stick around to hear the good news, which I guess that we're just going to have to find that out in the next chapter. Chapter 17 we're apparently going to skip the promised good news that Daniel wanted to tell Luce, at least for now. Instead, we jump right to Luce running straight for her room where she ignores Pen knocking on the door. She then mocks about how she can and doesn't want to get over Daniel. And even though his words scared her, she has to admit that he made a great deal of sense. Some of the things that he said in his info dump about her previous life sure explain a lot of Luce's little quirks. She also can't stop thinking about the shadows and about the deaths of Trevor and Todd. Luce eventually gets out of bed where she realizes that her desk chair is in the middle of the floor for some reason and there's something under it. She turns the light on and discovers that it's the book that she and Penn had been looking for, the one that was probably written by Daniel himself. Penn wrote a note saying that she took the spare room key to leave it in Luce's room and that she'd come by later so that they could talk about it. Luce sits down with the intention to start reading the book. However, when she opens to the first page, she finds that she can't move past it. It's inscribed to Lucinda, and there's an old photograph of Daniel and somebody who bears an uncanny resemblance to Luce, and Luce wants to tell herself that these are just people who happen to look like her and Daniel, but she knows that it's not true at all. Luce races to the library to try and find Penn, but instead she finds Ariane playing chess with Roland, and as Luce looks at Ariane, she sees a big scar in the back of Ariane's neck, which is mentioned way back when Ariane was first introduced. Ariane finishes the chess game with Roland and then turns to Luz. She says that she's been hearing naughty things about Luz and that Luz has to tell her. Against her better judgment, Luz sits down. Ariane explains how Molly saw Luz getting into the car Cam had sent yesterday and had taken a picture. She would have gone to tell Randy about the entire thing, but Ariane convinced her not to. Luz admits that she had gone to see Cam, but that she was also with Daniel, too. Luz tries to ask Roland if he's close to Daniel. If Daniel said something to Roland, even if it was crazy, would Roland believe it? Roland doesn't seem to know what Luz is talking about, so she leaves. As Luz continues her search for Penn, she literally runs into Miss Sophia. Miss Sophia asks if Luz is okay, but Luz says no. No, she is not okay. Thank you very much. Miss Sophia notes that Luz has the book that she and Penn had been looking for. She asks if Penn also read the book, but Luz doesn't know. Luz starts to tell Miss Sophia everything, but Miss Sophia is hung up over the idea that Daniel kissed Luz, and but quickly dismisses Luz's further questions about why the kiss is important. Miss Sophia starts to flip through the book, but Luz tells her to stop on a page that's full of some of Daniel's drawings, and Luz suddenly gets insanely sad at the sight of them. Miss Sophia says that the two of them are cursed and asks Luz how much she knows. Luz starts to explain things to Miss Sophia, but randomly morphs into a rude discussion about Luz's religious beliefs, which has nothing to do with Daniel at all. 
and then Roland randomly falls over because he'd been tipping his chair back on two legs, which doesn't really seem to serve any point other than to really tick me off for interrupting the flow of the story. Miss Sophia then drags Luce back into their conversation, acting like the incident with Roland hadn't just happened at all. She asks Luce if she knows who Daniel is. In the library, the clock starts to chime the hour. Luce feels itchy and thinks that she's been away from Daniel for too long. Miss Sophia also seems convinced that Luce is going to dive right on schedule exactly as Daniel had been fearing she would. Luce looks at the old photo in the book and says that she needs to go find Daniel. Miss Sophia insists on going with her, which Luce naturally doesn't like. She makes an inward, sarcastic comment about inviting the rest of the school to come watch, but Miss Sophia is already halfway out the door while Luce was standing there and thinking about this. As they go across the campus, they pass a random and unnamed female character who is just sitting and reading. Miss wishes that she could trade places with her, somebody who doesn't have to worry about past lives and killer shadows. And all I have to say is, grass man, always greener. They get to the cemetery where Luce had last seen Daniel. Pen is there and she looks upset. She says that she saw some of their kids heading down there wherever that is, and then it was like somebody set up fireworks as if they never went up into the sky, and now Pen is too afraid to go see what's happening because she's got a bad feeling about whatever is going on. And... <sighs> Even when this book does finally start to move along towards an actual plot, then it drags us back into this endless nothing. The only thing of value that we learned in this entire chapter was confirmation that Daniel was telling the truth. The rest of this is just useless padding and loose rehashing the plot, which makes me so frustrated when a character does this because it's like, why did I bother reading all of that if a character was just going to sum everything up for us later? Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and be here next Monday. Don't forget to check out my other video snark series. If you're new here, then I also run a Tumblr where I post daily book snark. I also have a Patreon where I post early releases of my daily snark, but also bonus snark that isn't up anywhere else. Plus, all supporters get a big shout out. Thank you so much to Don and Phoebe for supporting me already. You can hear your name next week by joining my Patreon for $1 a month. However, since it is a reoccurring charge, I also accept PayPal and coffee. Also, if you want to read some of the stuff that I've published, and you can purchase my works on Amazon. I have 17 erotic short stories, one short story collection, and one full-length novel. Links for all of these things will be posted below. See you next week, guys!